Hello, and welcome back to Let's Replay Mystery Case Files 13th Skull. I don't think this rain will ever I'm up. MCF Poppin, this is part 5. We gotta collect some clothes for Lewis, but first we can get a golden crown insignia. So by putting the fountain stuff in this situation here, you get a golden crown from it. Though I do like, um, in this game, how you see the cemetery gates in the distance here, and then once you're free to explore outside, then you can go to the cemetery. It's pretty cool. Now, with that stuff... We can just put it in the wheelbarrow, and it actually does show up here, outside. That's cool. But then once you place it all, now he's got his different outfit on. Well, thanks for rounding up them dry clothes, detective. Last thing I need to do is catch a cold. Hey, uh, what do you think of this uh, metal shape I found down by the base of the old fountain? I think it's a metal shape. Wow. Well, I don't know what it is either. Wish we knew where Mr. Lawson got off to, though. He promised to pay me cash for any of this weird stuff that I might dig up around here. Suppose he thought it was part of his lost treasure. The funny thing is, it actually is part of the lost treasure. You got to be kidding. You seen that crazy fountain? I don't know who built this place, but who put something like that in your front yard? You ought to climb up the attic if you want to see that other weird contraption. You could probably fix the stool out there in the shed if you can't reach the stairs to the attic. Of course, you're going to need some nails and other stuff first. Gathering Lewis a change of clothing did whittle to soften his demeanor. I doubt any favor will land him up. Me on his good side, but I'll need to gain some trust if I'm going to find more clues. Like Mary, Lewis also commented on the many strange fixtures around the old home and gave me a rusty metal T-shape he unearthed while weeding the front yard. I have no hint to its purpose, but I recall seeing something similar dangling from the chandelier at the base of the stairs. It's safe to say I'm in agreement regarding the manor's many curiosities. I thought it worth noting that Marcus Lawson promised to pay Lewis cash for any unusual findings encountered during the course of his chores. The full extent of Mr. Lawson's attraction toward the home's history is slowly coming to light. Yeah, now this is a weird thing. This, like, objective, because all the posts are hidden in the shed here. Now, and the nails are all really close by too. They're a bit further apart, but not that much. Except for this one is stuck, so you gotta use the hammer. And hey, now we can get a stool. Let's 
Somehow, pulling the nails out, we managed to make them perfectly straight, too. Yeah. Aren't we the amateur carpenter? But to get to the attic, we gotta pry off all the boards. Oh, and a cool detail is for every board you pry off, this actually gets updated to reflect that, too. Now we got some bees. But we don't gotta worry about them quite yet. Now we get to go up into the creepy attic. There's quite a lot of stuff going on in here. First of all, there's this puzzle. Which is simply doing making all of them one color and then all of them the other color but once you get one it's easy to get the other one then. and hey another key and a newspaper Retirement Gala turns tragic. Mansion in ruins. Death and destruction have been the fate of the Ponser Mansion. Scourged by flames at 4.15 o'clock yesterday morning, the blaze lasted some four hours, leaving the home a mass of smoldering ruins. No bodies have been accounted for as the search within the slag and soot continues. Mr. Ponser, the home's owner, remains unharmed, yet devastated by the horrifying events of the evening, which began with much revelry. What began as a humble send-off quickly spun to madness as the entire riverfront property was engulfed in flames. Local fire crews were too late to the scene to prevent the loss of many lives. Aforementioned Ponser is the sole expected survivor of a tragedy whose cause is currently unknown. Yeah, that's the wrong soul. Didn't they proofread this? Huh. The stench of decay mixed with oppressive humidity makes the attic a claustrophobic destination. After braving the bees and taking a deep breath on the balcony, I climbed up and unlocked an old chest in the corner. Another news clipping shapes insight to the manor's past by describing a terrible fire in this spot over two centuries ago. This is the second reference to the name Ponser. It is interesting, though, to, like, slowly piece together the backstory of this place. I like the like, world building in this game's story. Like, you can tell, though, that most of this area really hasn't changed much because of According to this map, there was, even back in, like, the days of pirates, there was still, like, the carriage house and the cemetery and the neighbor's house and the town where it is. Pretty interesting. Another cat yet. 
There's so many cats around. It's never real explained if they're the Lawson's actual cats they have as pets, or if it's actually just some, like, strays that wandered in. Though you would think if they were stray cats that they would want you to remove them. Like they would have wanted to get rid of them out of the house. And for that matter, with so many cats around, why did the basement have such a bad problem with rats and such? I don't know. Anyway, now there's this puzzle. Which become it starts out kind of tough, but becomes a lot easier as you progress through the... And because basically you're just trying to get the orange skulls to this hole and the blue skulls to that hole, but like once you get rid of a couple of them, it becomes so much simpler. Though it is kind of hard to click on the things. But now though, once you got rid of one of each, it's a lot easier to navigate through the thing. Pretty interesting little puzzle, though. And now that lowered something. We don't know quite what yet, but if you look here, the chandelier is lowered, and then here it's even lower. But again, they didn't design this scene to show off the lower chandelier. Come on. But hey, we can get a second T. rope we can lower down into the study and now here behind this page is another crown insignia and then on this napkin is someone with a B initials who was here recently and there's a little phone number down there, 7374410, for FT Fish. I wonder if that might come in handy later. Hmm. Yeah. But get a load, though, of this room. Like, probably the junkiest room in the house. It's a one. No wonder they didn't use this for a bedroom and instead just as a, like, study. But you can open the door and then leave. Captain Phineas Crown, also known as the Black Crown, was an 18th century privateer turned pirate. Crown gained infamy by overtaking scores of weakly defended French, Spanish, and English trading vessels entering the Gulf of Mexico via the lucrative Caribbean Sea routes. Unlike other famous pirates, content with absconding with treasure, 
Crown and his men commandeered the entire vessel, leaving no survivors. When reading about Captain Crown, it's important to be able to distinguish between fact and fiction. The third bedroom's inoperable door handle has forced me to gain entry via the attic. Aside from a few splinters obtained on my descent, I safely landed in a dimly lit bedroom that now serves as a study. Stacks of reading material with titles like The Compendium of Pirates and Famous Lost Treasure lie scattered about the room, bearing witness to Mr. Lawson's obsession with the pirate legend. One man in particular, a 17th century brigand by the name of Captain Phineas Crown, receives my full examination. Could this be the man whose ghost Magnolia claims to have seen the night of Marcus's disappearance? After collecting more evidence, I'll revisit Mrs. Lawson and update her on my crop process. Yes. Yeah. The Master Detective doesn't want to go back up the rope. But you can go back down the rope, I think. Yeah. But hey, now we can go in and out of this room who had the broken door handle before. That's convenient. Yes, Pippi. Pippi, knock it off. Oh, there's actually dialogue for her shouting. It makes more sense when she was standing in this room. But I guess Pippi's so annoying she has to shout clear from another room. Judging from the ruckus upstairs, it sounds like you've been keeping yourself rather busy, detective. Please tell me you've found some clues to Marcus's whereabouts. And I mentioned before the lighting, but I really like the lighting here on Mrs. Lawson. How there's the light from outside on one side of her face and the light from the lamp on the other side. After Marcus found that map, he turned the third bedroom upstairs into Treasure Command Center. He used it as a dumping ground for all the junk he collected about this supposed pirate. It was the folks that he met at that tavern down the road that stirred his interest in all this nonsense. A tavern, you say? I don't know what it's called. Just some towny dive bar down by the river. I would rather you stay focused on finding Marcus. But if you must, you should protect yourself from the mosquitoes. There should be some bug spray in the closet by the stairs. Now that we've talked to Mrs. Lawson, though, this second hidden object scene here opens up so we can get the big giant bug spray can. Now, oh, yeah, the fly's colored green for some reason in this scene. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, hey! need to find the loop again, but this time I don't have any trouble. Oh yeah, I can't call the Slinky. Because that's a trademark's name, so just call it a Toy Spring. Oh yeah, this is the flask, but for the longest time I remember I couldn't find the flask. Because I always thought it looked like a shower drain or something. But anyway, with the bug spray, we can go into town. I don't think this rain will ever let up. That's a true statement, Lewis. Shouldn't it won't. you be looking for Mr. Lawson? I am. And we can just spray and head into town. But we'll explore around this town in the next part. So like and subscribe if you want. I'll see you then.